Mina, come on, Wad, Jesus freaking gamer here. I wanted to revisit the topic that I brought up from Psalm 79 yesterday. I repeated it a few times in the little message, and it was the idea of the, Israel, the Israelites have sinned, other nations have come in, invaded them, taken them prisoner, killed a lot of them, whatnot. Now they are repenting before their God, and now the Israelites want God's wrath to be turned against the nations that have invaded them and to repay them for what has been done to them, <clears throat> a.k.a. repay those heathen nations for what they have done to the Jewish nation in their time of unrepentance. And I said yesterday that that was okay, that that was acceptable, that there was nothing wrong with what Asaph said. It's in the Bible. It's right there. And I don't think Asaph was wrong. I wanted to elaborate a little bit on that because I, I just I thought it was interesting to where um, Asaph in this psalm, sounded like a very typical human saying, punish them, not us. Take the wrath away from us and put it on them. Let us have happy fun times and destroy and kill all of them. It sounds incredibly brutal. And that's pretty much what happened as well in the Old Testament <clears throat> to the Israelites and to the heathen nations who disobeyed God. And I wanted to give an explanation as to why I think it's okay for Asaph to have said that. And if you read in other parts of the Bible, it talks about how Israel is being punished for their sin, but the punishment won't be forever. And eventually the nations that have um, hurt Israel during judgment, they'll be punished for hurting Israel because even though they disobeyed God, the nation shouldn't have taken it as far as they did. And I wish I could give you an exact quote on where that is in the Old Testament. I remember reading it somewhere. I'm generally not that vague. I generally know at least roundabout where this information is. Here, I think it's in the prophets, but I can't swear to it. I apologize. So, Google is your friend, but I'm not sure as to tell you how to Google about that. I guess Google essentially what I just said. And, of course, what I really want to encourage is for you to read the Old Testament for yourself. Read the Bible for yourself. That is a huge, huge task. It's a, it's a big, thick book, but it is the best book you will ever read. And as a Christian, yes, I'm definitely going to say that. I genuinely believe that. It is right for the nations... We're talk and we're talking Old Testament times here. I want to make that clear. Um, God's chosen people nowadays are not necessarily Jews just because they're Abraham's descendants. It's Christians, those who actively believe in Jesus Christ. You're not born into the faith. You're not born into the church. You choose to be a part of it. You choose to be God's child. He wants to adopt you, and you say yes to him. That makes you God's child. So this is definitely more specifically for the Old Testament, but it was right that the Jews basically come out on top, and the other nations be punished and fall into God's wrath. The reason for that was Israel was God's chosen nation. They did have faith in God. When they were in sin, they, were, they needed to be punished, sometimes even to the point of being killed. And God used the foreign nations, the sinful nations, to do just that, to exact punishment on Israel, to bring them to repentance. That does not exempt the heathen nations from being destroyed themselves. Just because God is using them in their sinfulness does not mean that, okay, they were used by God for this punishment, so everything they do is okay. You know, the way they live their life is okay. Their lack of belief in God is okay because God used them. No. God used them despite the fact that they didn't believe in Him. He used them despite the fact that they were heathens. He used them despite the fact that they did not worship him. And so it's kind of like regardless of whether they were used specifically to punish Israel or not, when the cup of their sin was filled up, and you can read about that in Abraham in one of Abraham's discussions with God where he said, Egypt, your, your children, the Israelites, are going to be in Egypt for 400 years, 400 plus years. And then, and then eventually I will free them and send them back to the land where you are right now because right now the sin of the Canaanites is not yet full. I don't know how exactly that measuring scale works, 
but apparently there's a certain limit of sin God has, and when that sin has approached its capacity, God moves in judgment and brings about destruction on those people. And it does appear that his tolerance level for sin in his own people is much, much lower than the heathen nations. Apparently they got a lot more of a grace period than the nation of Israel did. And I think that makes sense. The Israelites had the law. They knew better. Whereas the other nations, they'd heard of what God had done in Israel. This wasn't a matter of just complete ignorance. The other nations, they heard what God did in the nation of Israel. Abraham himself was a very famous and rich man. I have no, And he met many rulers in his time. It's not as though God left himself unknown and his name unknown. He was known. The people then chose, do I follow this God now that I've heard of him? Do I pursue knowledge of him or not? It was ultimately, even though it, it's different between the Old and New Testament, even back then it was still the people's choice whether to pursue God or not and whether to believe in him or not. <clears throat> and if they were not believers in him, then ultimately their lot is destruction. And that hasn't changed nowadays. If you're not a believer in God, you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, and you refuse to believe in him, then your lot is destruction. That's not what God wants. In fact, this video right now is God reaching out to you to get his name out to you to give you knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And I'll even throw in that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again from the dead to guarantee you eternal life in heaven. Lack of knowledge is not an excuse for you after watching this video. And lack of knowledge was not an excuse to several of the heathen nations and kings back in the time because they had heard of God's exploits through Abraham and through his children and descendants, the children of Israel. So when Israel was, was being sinful, God punished them in various means, the nations being one such of those means. But that still doesn't exempt those nations from God's judgment. And that... And when the Israelites are following God and they're obeying him, then the nations, when they try to invade Israel, they don't stand a chance. They're put down immediately and they're slaughtered and destroyed. And the Israelites are just fine and they are not subjugated because God would not let that happen to his people. So they were, they were tools. They were instruments. God wanted them to be so much more and he was using Israel to proclaim his name throughout the world. Some people, Naaman being the one that comes to my mind immediately, he listened. He became a believer in the one true God. You can, it's N-A-A-M-A-N. -A -A he talked to Elisha. That, I can give you definite names to Google there. He believed in God. He had heard of the Israeli God. In fact, he heard it from um, an Israeli slave girl that his men had captured on one of their raids. So how kind of weird and twisted is that? You know, God didn't deliver that girl from being a slave girl, but he did use her to bring salvation to that household. And that's just what, that's one story. Who knows what else was done in those times? Quite frankly, who knows what else has been done even in these recent days and how God reaches out to people. God, God used one of his people imprisoned to, get, to make his name known to a heathen, to a heathen general. And then there were times when he used the heathens to bring judgment on his people. God's workings and God's ways are very intricate and very, they're very individual by person for what that person needs to hear, for what that person needs to see, to know who God is, to know that he is real, and so that they'll have a choice to accept him or not. And that ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would be. Holy smoke. I've been talking some long messages here recently, but I thought after the message yesterday that I wanted to go a little bit more in detail on how, yes, the heathens did deserve judgment and the Israelites did deserve salvation based on the fact that, they were, that the Israelites were God's chosen people and the heathens were not. And, the fact, and I wanted to point out the fact that, yes, they did hear about God. They did have a chance. It's not as if God's name and his works were unknown. So I wanted to bring all of those things into light. And I took about 10 minutes to do so for anyone who's watched this entire video. Thank you very much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you disagree with me or have any remaining questions, please leave it in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.